Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on congruent figures. Here's what you'll learn. How to identify congruent figures and use congruence to solve problems. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. Look at the center circles below. Which one is larger? Most people believe the one on the right looks larger, but it's an optical illusion. They're both exactly the same size, and I can prove it to you. I'll draw a blue circle on top of the center circle at left, and slide it over to the one on the right. They match exactly, so they're both the same size. The two center circles are said to be congruent. Now identify congruent shapes in this image of a backgammon game. See if you come up with the same congruent figures that I do. It looks to me like the playing pieces are congruent. Also the dice appear to be congruent. The triangular spaces are also congruent. And I see one more. It looks like the storage areas around the outside edges are also congruent. Now the pieces we just identified are congruent, even though the colors or markings may not be the same. But remember, for congruence we're concerned with size and shape, not any colorings or markings on the figures. Now identify congruent shapes in this image of a target. Well, there are a lot of circles in the figure, but the circles are all different sizes. So that means there are no congruent figures in the target. For most geometric figures, you have to check corresponding side lengths and corresponding angles to determine if they're congruent. However, for triangles, you only need to check the lengths of corresponding sides. If the corresponding side lengths of a triangle are equal, then the angles are automatically equal as well. This property of congruence is called the side-side-side rule, and again it only applies to triangles. Let's determine if these two triangles are congruent. Even if objects are oriented differently as these two are, they can still be congruent. Congruent is about the same size and shape, not about their orientation. To determine if two triangles are congruent, we can use the side-side-side rule. It says we only have to check the lengths of corresponding sides. So let's go ahead and identify the corresponding sides on these two triangles. Side AB in the first triangle corresponds with DE in the second triangle and they're the same length. They're both 8 meters. So we can write that the line segments are congruent. Line segment AB is congruent with line segment DE. Now it looks like side BC in the first triangle corresponds with EF in the second triangle and we notice they're the same length as well. They're both 6 meters. So we can write that those line segments are congruent as well. Line segment BC is congruent with line segment EF. Finally, side CA corresponds to FD on the other triangle, and they're both the same length as well at 10 meters. So we can write that those line segments are congruent as well. Line segment CA corresponds to line segment FD. Now since all the sides are congruent, that means that both triangles are congruent as well. We're going to write a congruent statement for both triangles, but we need to write our congruent statement for the triangles so that corresponding points on each triangle line up. Here's what that means. On triangle ABC, we know that point A corresponds to point D on the other triangle. So our congruent statement will be triangle ABC is congruent with triangle D is the first point we'll write down. The second point, point B, corresponds to point E on the other triangle, so the next letter we'll write is E. Finally, point C 
corresponds to point F on the other triangle and we'll write the F down last. Now we know triangle ABC is congruent with triangle DEF. Now while the side 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 rule works well for triangles, we can't rely on comparing just the sides on other geometric shapes. Consider the two quadrilaterals below. Now while the lengths of corresponding sides are congruent, the tops and bottoms are both the same, and the sides are both the same, it's obvious just by looking at the figures themselves that they're not congruent. We must also consider the measures of corresponding angles. Now let's figure out, using congruency, the missing measures in these two figures. The problem tells us the figures are congruent. So when objects are oriented differently, it can be hard to sometimes recognize the corresponding sides and angles. However, determining some reference points will make it much easier. We're looking for a missing angle in the second pentagon, and it's that red question mark. The missing angle is between 120 degrees and the 130 degree angles. Now since the pentagons are congruent, this has to be the same angle that's between the 120 degree and 130 degree angle in the first pentagon. And that's the 85 degree angle. So now we have our answer. The missing angle is 85 degrees. These figures are congruent as well. Let's determine any missing measures. The figures are reflections of each other. But it's still fairly easy to determine the missing side lengths x and y. Side length x corresponds to the 15 mile side length on the other figure. So x is 15 miles. And side y corresponds to the 25 mile side length on the other figure. So y is 25 miles. Congratulations! You've learned how to identify congruent figures and use congruence to solve problems.